Hey guys, what's going on? It's Vic Barry. Is it possible to color grade action camera footage? Well, I want you, if you would be as kind, to give me 60 seconds to show you something that I shot on the Insta360 ONE RS. It was all shot in the log profile and it was graded in Lumetri and Premiere Pro. So stick around, 60 seconds now. Yeah, it is kind of possible. Even from something like the Insta360 ONE RS or the GoPro or whatever you got, just shoot something in that log profile. But here's the thing, color grading is something that people who are starting out completely freak out with because it's like, oh, it's hard. All you gotta do is give it a go. And this is what I'm gonna show you here, how to do the basics. I promise you guys are gonna nail this. I'm in Premiere Pro here and I'm using the Lumetri panel, but whatever software that you have, it's got some color grading stuff somewhere. So this is a 6K clip from the Insta360 ONE RS. It was shot in the log profile, so it's kind of a little bit washed out, not as vibrant as it could be. So I want to start in the basic correction here and obviously set your white balance and camera. But if you don't, or if you want to have a go at here, wherever you are, click the color picker and find something that's kind of white like this roof here and as we can see it's kind of warmed it up just a little bit move the sliders around move them around what's the worst thing can happen you can always go control z or command z and undo our temperature is how warmer it is we can have a tent in it the saturation is how kind of vibrant the colors are and keep in mind a lot of color grading that's got to be subtle okay just enough not too much just enough Right now I'm gonna leave this at 100. So the exposure is how bright the overall image is. I'm gonna leave this as is. The contrast is the kind of difference between the shadows and the highlights or the dark parts, which are the shadows and the highlights, which are the bright parts. So as we can see, the sky here has got some detail, but I'm gonna drop down the highlights to give it a little bit more, or if we put it up here, it's, yeah, no. So let's bring it down. Let's bring up our shadows to where we want them. The shadows is bringing up those, is bringing the details back into the dark parts of the image. It's what we want, because we don't want people going, what's in them dark parts there? And our whites again are the whites. So as we can see, we're going to start clipping everything here and screwing things up. So let's keep these down just a tad. Same with our blacks to make things darker. And then let's look at our contrast and bump the contrast. So if we turn our Lumetri here on or off, we can see we're starting to make a difference. So I'm gonna bring up the exposure one little bit. And of course, have your scopes open as well. Really important. Now this is where you might get really confused. I'm gonna explain these real quick and once you get an understanding of them, magic will happen. Not like that, but magic will happen. For now, I'm going to leave on our waveform Luma, and what we can see here is 100. So once we have anything that goes over 100, this line here happens. So everything is kind of clipping. And what that means is if it's clipping, then it's stripping the details out. So you're losing everything. So once you get a solid white line, you're losing details in that image. Same for the shadows here, or the dark parts of the image. If we bring it down here and we drag the blacks down, we can see solid line. That's crushing the blacks, which is not what we want to do in a lot of cases. What we want to do here is make sure everything is kind of around the 100 and around the zero. So as we can see, we need to bring this down. That's nice looking there. As we can see, it's just starting to crop up there around the 100 mark. That's where we are. 
And now we've kind of got this pretty well exposed. We can bring up our shadows or our blacks just a bit down here. So there's no kind of hard lines and we're good. That's it. That's it. That's that part done. So we've kind of got it exposed, right? I'm going to bring the contrast up one more bit and bring the highlights down another bit to bring those details back. And then all we got to do is jump into the creative so we can sharpen it, which we don't want to do really. We can have a faded film look, which we kind of don't want to do. It's a bit dated. Fade it, date it. Then our vibrance, the vibrance affects the reds, greens, and blues only. And then the saturation affects how bright and how kind of saturated all the colors are right across the board. So for now, let's leave all this here. Where the magic does really happen is curves, okay? So we have our hue versus saturation. Now I know what you're thinking, ah, oh, here we go, all this technical jargon. Hue is the hue of the color, while hue of blue. Saturation is how kind of vibrant it is so if there's no saturation it's black and white if there's a lot of saturation then it's quite colorful looking see how hard is that i told you i told you this wasn't hard so in this case here all i want to do is i take a look at our hue versus hue i'm going to use the eyedropper tool i'm going to click the blue skies now i like a bit of teal in my blue teal, teal yeah so I'm just going to push this, as we can see, we're affecting just the blues here. So I'm going to make those a little bit more teal. I'm going to get our hue versus saturation, and we're going to make those blues a little bit more saturated. Not a lot, just enough. All right. Our hue versus luma. Luma is how bright everything is. Let's leave that alone for now because this is an 8-bit image and it'll break up very, very easily. And don't forget, speaking of, I'm going to show you when you know things are bad and what you got to do to fix it. And trust me, you will know when they're bad. I'm going to take a look at our kind of uh, yellows. Going to make them a little bit more saturated. I'm also going to take a look at more of our yellows. Scroll across here, and I'm going to make our yellows just a bit more orange, because that's what I kind of like. You might hear orange and teal a lot. Do it subtly. Not too much, just do it subtly. And that's kind of where we're going from this to something that's a little bit more pleasing. Now, that's the hue saturation curves. And, and one quick tip here, right? One super quick tip. Uh, Luma versus Sat. Just click here, bring all of these down. Because we want anything that's white to be white. All right, we don't want any kind of weird color tinge or tints on anything that's white because it'll just blow everybody's heads off. So that's all I'm going to do for now. And then just really quickly up here, the RGB curves, this is the kind of more contrast, it's a good tip to add some extra contrast or contrast will stop there. So down this one, this is our dark parts, which is the shadows. Well, you knew that, right? Because you learned something a second ago. Then our highlights, we can bring things up, we can bring things down. Then our mid-tones are around here. And I'm just gonna roll this off. So as, you, as I'm gonna roll it off, Premiere, come on. So as you can see, we're kind of making just what they'd call in the business, an S-curve. So very rough, simple S curve, good contrast. So if we turn on and turn off again, always do that so you can see how things are going. We are getting somewhere nice. So what we want to do here in the red channel, and again, please, if you're stuck, pause, go back. We are going to add some greens and blues into the shadows in the red channel. So as you can see, we're getting a bit more of a filmic look. We can push things up in the mid tones. We can bring them down. So keep in mind, once you learn what pushes up and pushes down does in each channel, then you can kind of inject more colors into where you want. So I kind of like a, kind of blues and greens in my uh, shadows. Everything else is pretty cool. And that's it. So we've gone from there to there. So as you can see, we have made a substantial difference to the image. Let's bounce back to our basic correction. We can see we've, ah, we've got a little bit more room up here in the exposure. So let's bring that back up just a tad and push your highlights up a little bit and then we can go down here and we can add things like a vignette if you want but if you want to make things look really cinematic i'll show you how in just a sec shadows mid-tones and curves on our color wheels let's bring the shadows a little bit more tea let's bring our mid-tones a little bit more orange and you guessed it kids let's bring our highlights a bit more orange if you want to know when things are going to be bad here's a thing to look out for so let's say we're back in our curves here now, before I continue here, I would really appreciate it in the comments. If you're looking at this and you're going, Vic, I've absolutely no clue what's going on. I'm lost. 
Let me know if you're lost and tell me why you're lost. So if I make another video like this, I can actually change things around so you won't get lost, but I think you shouldn't be lost. But I'd still like to know if you're lost. Comment. Our hue versus luma. Let's say here we want to darken our sky just a tad on those blues. See if we bring it down. See what's happening up here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Tilde key. See? See what's going on? Like, you don't need me to tell you that don't look good. That's crap. That's bad. That's just real bad. So that's when you know things are being broken up. So keep that in mind. Once you see a lot of pixels and stuff floating around like that in the image, yeah, no. Let's make this a little bit more cinematic because I know that's what a lot of people like to do. So depending on the software that you're using, um, all you gotta do in this case is not that, because yeah, <laughs> select an adjustment layer. Um, I'm gonna drop this in here, alrighty. And then I'm gonna go to effects. I'm gonna select crop. I'm gonna drop a crop effect onto the adjustment layer. And then finally down here, stay with me. What the heck was that? See, tip for YouTubers, always turn off your phone. So let's go 15 at the top, 15 at the bottom. Boom, look at that, look at that. Look, I mean, it's like, it's like Michael Bay himself shot this. Nothing's blowing up. Now, speaking of the Insta360 ONE RS, if you want to see the settings that you absolutely should change right now, check this video out right now.